So, Bob, I'm not one to let things come between us, but this box is a bit big, uh, so I'm going to have to it's give... It's a bit of a beast. I'm going to have to give way to it. Bob has not declared to me what this is. I'm, I'm getting Bora Games, which rings certain bells, but I've got nothing, nothing clear in mind. So, what are we looking at, Bob? Well, we're looking at a game which some thought was never going to arrive, like me. I've just seen the name now. <laughs> and some were always um, guessing that it would. It has, but it's not the beast that it originally was. Okay. And it's Divinity Original Sin, the board game. Ah, I remember the cries of lament. <laughs> so what's what's the background to this one, Bob? What's, what's the story for you? Because all your purchases have a reason and a, and a story to them. Get no. your get your pints ready. Not really. <laughs> I have a bit of it. If I like it, I buy it. Mm, okay. Um, well, I do like Larian Studios games. Right. I've played them from their very first game right up to the ones. But they became well known with three games. Two of them were Divinity, the original Sin games. One and two. Very hard to remember the differences. And the last one, which even... People who don't really know of Larian would have heard of is Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3, yes. Which has won awards left, right and centre. They do RPGs. Well, they decided to make a board game of really a mixture of one and two. Mainly two. So the name's actually quite wrong. Okay, yeah. But <clears throat> it has changed from when it arrived when it was initially kickstarted right. to now. Okay. And we'll go through that later. So so what this what this project started out as isn't what's in this box. No. Or not fully what's in this not box. Not fully. Right. Okay. Was that design issues, rules issues, pricing? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Okay. They didn't like it, let's put it like that, and they changed it. This box, because you got me to set this up on the table, weighs a ton. Yeah. Um what, what we'll probably do is empty the box and, and yeah. then we'll bring you over for a close look at, at what it is. And while we're having a close look, Bob, I think, can probably tell you a bit more about this than, than I can since I was kept in the dark. So I'm going to set this down between us. Oh, jakers! It's like that. Ah! It's a... It's a... It's, it's, a, it's a coffee table! <laughs> It is a coffee table. <laughs> it's a coffee table game. How? Because you can use it as a coffee table. And we're actually going to do it in reverse order as well, as we take this out. Well, what I'm thinking is, we'll plunk it all out, just to let folks get an idea of, oh my goodness, this is all in this box. Yes. And then we'll invite them over to the table for a one-by-one -one kind of close look. Oh, you mean like a great British Bake Off? Like so a great like British Bake Off. I know it's been a while from we've done a, a, a video like, so, I don't know. This could be a learning curve for us all. Maybe you'll vlog it up by the time we get to the bottom of the box. Um, but let's let's sort of see. So one thing I'd say, if you decide to buy this from Larian, I don't know if they're doing it in general retail, but they're doing it from, they are selling it themselves. And you decide to go with everything, you'll get everything that's in this box except for one item. Well, we can, we can come to that one I item. I will get you that one item, which is here. That one item, well, we'll look at that in due course. I'm just going to lovingly throw this huge amount of snow. I'm starting to feel like I'm maybe being cheated by the size of this box. No, we, you'll find out why. Okay, okay. So we have yes. one. Oh, that's bigger than I thought. That's yeah. what she said. Two. Two. Three. Three. Four. 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 And then more, more, more snow. More snow. Oh, Jakers, right. And then I'll let you get that, because you're a bit more supple than me. Why, right, thank you. <laughs> Ooh, I've, I've, I've got the edge of it. Oh, that's that's a thick one. Yeah. And then the fun begins with the last one. It's a thick one, but it's a light one. Yes. Oh, there's more. Then there's the last one. Oh, goodness me. You might want to stand to lift this, because if you don't, you might break your back. I might actually damage it, is more likely with the looks of things. Yes. Good grief, why wasn't this at the top? Oh! Right, 
Oh my word. This has been, I have opened this and checked the card to make sure they were all there. And do you know, sorry, just while we get rid of this a moment. That's how heavy the box on its own is. Um, they say that board gamers don't get much exercise. No. So somebody's trying to change that. Yes. Uh, wow. This is the base game. Base game. Models, which you don't really need. Okay, that's a big box of models. Yeah, there's something in there which is quite impressive. Okay, so then we've got- I'll even take on your fancy. Right. Let me see. <laughs> we've, we've got the Haunted Keep expansion. We have Nemesis expansion. Nemesis expansion. expansion. That's the dungeon expansion. Nightmare dungeon and, and that's miniatures the upgrade. Yeah. And then the wee white box in the front yeah. is what you got with the premium edition when you backed on Kickstarter. Well, we'll keep that to the very end then, won't we'll no, really. It's only extra dice and things. All right, well then we'll, we'll not. We'll just look at that when, whenever we feel like it. It does have some very nice bits in it. But... Quite a bit of stuff to go through here. Um, what we'll do, folks, we'll, we'll mm. cut, we'll bring you over to the table and uh, we'll do sort of top down on this. And uh, hopefully Uncle Bob can keep you right on what you're looking at. I don't think we're going to go too deep on, on gameplay or anything in this one. Oh, we're no, just kind no. of looking at what, what's here. And you yes. can kind of tech, talk us through as we're chatting what what the game sort of loose mechanic is. Yeah. So people can have an idea about that too. So pretty boxes and pretty things with a slight overtone of how it all works. I think that's basically it. Don't go anywhere, but you will. But it just won't matter. You'll, yeah. you'll appear at magic. In front of us now. Okay, Bob, so we've got your core box. This is the core box. As you can see, on the box, it does state it's fully cooperative. No PvP, no player versus player in this game. It's you versus the game. Okay, so that's obviously going to appeal to some people. It's probably going to put some people off straight away, the fact that it's a core yeah. game. Yeah, fair enough. It's fair enough. It's a dungeon crawler, but not a dungeon crawler. Did it start out as co-op? It was... has always been right. co -op okay, so that, that aspect of what we're looking at is... No. That's a solid lead. Yes, that's what I said. It's a beautiful box. Wow, that that is... That's meaty. Is meaty the right word for a cardboard box? I don't know. I don't know, but it works for that. Okay, so we've got to stop. Yep. Do not unpack the game until you've read this. Yep. You lot at home can read it. We can't be annoyed. It's literally the tutorial. Okay. Oh, a nice little bit of artwork on the back for you yep. to frame and put up in your house if you're that way inclined. Right. We get the basic rule book. Okay. Which is nicely laid out. Plenty of pictures. Oh, here, better do that. Well, you better do this, actually. You've forgotten, haven't you? I have. Yeah. So, it's one of the things that we've always liked in terms of an immediate flick at it there. It's... Lots of pictorial examples, lots of talking about what they did. It is obviously very wordy, but then it's a big game. It was going to have lots of words. Yeah, it's not <laughs> that complicated. Okay. You roll the dice, you hit things. Fair enough. And various things mean yeah. lots of things. So we've got like a player area there. So this is obviously a character card and where your equipment goes. goes. And because it's a campaign and also an RPG, you level up during the game. Okay. So quite a bit of the rulebook is involved with that. So I get vibes, even just looking at that, I get vibes from the likes of Gloomhaven that there's a, a team of playing through. And even even that, um, oh, was it third edition uh, Warhammer Fantasy roleplay? The one that Fantasy Flight done? Yes, it was the third. I think, I think it was... Oh, it was the second. Third. Second. No, I think it, something tells me it was the third was, or no, something. No, first, but anyway. second, and yet third. You had the character cards and all that sort of thing. Okay, so we've got a rule book, which... It's it's magazine thickness. It's not yes, massive. Yes, it's not ridiculous. Okay. You have one player aid. Okay. Well, one each, hopefully. Yes, one each. Oh, it's a little which, book. It's a little book. And it's nice, the card. Oh, yeah. It's an explore. Explore round on the front. The combat round in the centre, how to make attacks, and the rest round. Okay. So, you do that. That's the thing. Fair this enough. What's that little thing? It's the journey sleeve for when you've used them up and done. Oh, right. Okay. They're, instead just, of ripping them up and throwing them away. You just get tucked in there. Tucked in there. Nice. Okay. That's surprisingly flimsy compared to... Yes. There's yeah. some fits. This looks nice. This is the time track. 
Right. Nice die cut. Yes, and you've counter to go in the match in and do it. And this is for your enemies. Fast, origins is us. Okay. And slow. So you faster slow enemies. And you and so on. And then there's active combat and the discard and the holding area. Okay. And that sits at the side of the book. The okay. Atlas of what? Excitement. Why does this flip? Because this strikes because me as something you're going to be using quite a lot. This flips when you're in the rest time. Right. So you can visit the merchant, so it tells you how to do that, and that interludes. So when you change levels. Okay, so there'll be nothing on this side at those times, Thanks. hence no. you can flip it over so to So you flip it over okay. and it tells you what you can do there. This looks like a book. This is the book. This is one of the big changes. Right. They changed it from an octagonal board Cent and a central octagonal board which you put cards round. Yeah. To an atlas. I'd like to put the lid down because I see a bend coming in your book there already. So this will allow us to take a it's lot of this. It's so, big book. so this is the play like the playbook. This is the playbook. Okay. So you can move around the zones. Right. So, it's so we'll go with a lot of artwork in between and information on how to start the game. So this was a change. This was the big change. Right. That and crafting was removed and runes. Hang on, is that is that your setup play area? That's your setup play area. Okay, I was gonna say it looks very busy, but then I'm realizing this is, the tutorial. This is your, your players around here, your yep. cards and tokens are here, your books here, and presumably some sort of like marketplace of cards. These are effects. Right. Effect cards. And there's so many of them. I have we've there's been quite a bit of talk about it. And people have recommended, and this whole fix for it, the stop it being such a table hog. Okay. Because these take up a ridiculous amount of space, these. I, I'm immediately struck that with it being a book, that's that's bound to sort of streamline things to an extent. Do the play, would the ideal thing be each player has like a, a little folder between sessions to keep their characters together, or how's that managed? Um, This is where they haven't thought it out. Right, okay. Because I'm sort of thinking what I done with, with the likes of Warhammer Fantasy when it was this set up with a, a core card and lots of ancillary cards, everyone had a little Ziploc folder for all their Ziploc stuff. Ziploc bag would do the job. Yeah, okay. So Ziploc you, you will need to have it to sort of keep things yeah. separated. So this is the tutorial setup, all beautifully illustrated, of course. It, it is very nice. And I mean, that's, yeah. that's I'm not sure what the, the grammage really... is, but it's a really heavy duty. Yeah. It's, it seems fairly well bound. Yep. Yeah. I mean, is there a lot of to and fro do you know? Is it maybe not fair enough? Not ask really. You? Right. It's because okay. what happens in this is they've cut down on the campaign length. It's not a Grim Haven or Frost Haven type campaign okay. where you spend hundreds of hours. They expect you to have this done in 20, 25, 30 hours. Okay, that's that's but like you'll only do about three, a quarter four sessions of what the game is. Right. Okay. Because you can go, I'll try that path the next time. Or I'll try a different character. Or I'll try a different build with the same character. Okay. So the... Yeah, you know... Uh, because this is very open in the way you develop your character. So the replayability comes through being different characters, trying the same adventure, but with different characters, different abilities. You can be the same person with right. different abilities. Yeah, okay. And you can go through the areas differently. Because say you go off... Yeah, there may be two or three exits from each area. Yeah. So you can go, I'll go out this exit. And that'll take... So and it's almost like a, different... a, it's like a, a choose-your-own-adventure book nearly. It's the same as all book campaigns. Yeah, okay. Depending on where you go, and there's levels. Yeah, all right, okay. As Fair you enough. go further, it gets harder. It's... It, I haven't... I've seen mm -hmm. similar... I haven't played that style of thing, so it's probably unfair of me to... Yeah. I, there's just something in me immediately when i seen we're playing in a book... Kind of was off putting in a way. But you played Sleeping Gods, you quite enjoyed it, and it's a book. Quite enjoyed it, but the game literally did seek to murder us. I mean, every turn. <laughs> every turn. Well, I think we just made some unwise decisions. This, the boss book. Okay, another nice one. I'll do this again. And it's the big baddies. Okay, so all the big bad things are in there. And how they work. Nice art again. And how they work, and also. 
So the G, it, it, do we have a GM? No. No, right, so the play. It's all ran through. Somebody's just sort of instilled yeah. to look at a particular book. Again, that seems very well put together. It is. Yeah, okay. So that's the that's that. two main books. Then we get into tokens. Tokens. These are elemental effect tokens here. Oh, again, I've done it the wrong way. Elemental effect tokens. Yep. As in, that's fire. That's electricity. I think that's poison, I'm not sure. Let's get, you're allowed to not know everything. You, you literally just got it. Gold and silver. Yep. Oops. Source tokens. Nobody noticed that I just popped one out. And ice or something? Yeah, snow, ice. That's a source. Okay. At the start of the game, you have a source collar on. So those, you can't use... Those are surprisingly lot. thin compared to everything else. Yeah. They're not thin, thin. No. But the thing is, these here are your enemy markers. Right. Which I think is poor. Mm. Yeah, they're a bit lackluster. Yeah, they could have a picture on them. Yeah, okay. You um, and the dials are for the hit points, to control the hit points on the, of the mobs. Now, you said there was a box of miniatures, but this appears to be filled with miniatures, Bob. It's got a few miniatures in it. Okay, let's lift this off to the side for a second. second. Right. Fire that one down. This is the first tray. Okay. I'll put this here. Have a look at the figures and let me see what you think of them. They're, they're quite big, aren't they? They are. These are the player counters. Well, it's, you know, it's a board game. Um, or it's a, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm almost in two minds. I can't call it a board game now because it's a book. Um, <laughs> Damn it, and Rectures. And it's, 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 it's not a miniatures game. No. Because it's a book. But your role-playing characters, I mean, I know a lot of people like... I don't know. I've, I've always been in two minds about miniatures. It's it's a bit like uh, me and the, the Doctor Who Time of the Daleks game. Yeah. Miniatures are lovely. They're completely unnecessary. They're virtually unnecessary. These ones you have more use than the other ones. Right, okay. Because these ones you represent you because you don't work as a party. Your party can split up and go wherever it wants on the map. The applicable map. Okay. So it is useful to have a figure to say, well, I'm in the, here and I'm over here. Yeah. But, because some of your abilities work from different spots. Okay. Because you've got ranged attacks and ranged defences. I suppose nowadays, no matter what, there's people who will have backed this purely on the miniatures if there's enough value in them for the price tag because they know they'll use it for 101 other things. Yes, they're a bit big for d and Well, if everything's the same scale, then they're not. No, <laughs> this is true. That's for the boss. That's the boss card. No point card. showing me. Nothing. <laughs> it's just a wee boss card. The short. And this is a this is the player card. Right, okay. As you That's can see, nice. you've got these. This is your initiative or your action points. Yep. And as you can see, you can go up to, you've got up to eight in green. And then you've nine and ten. Okay. But you only can get these by using special abilities and later on in the game. Okay. Here, you've got four talents. You've got a backpack. You can have two one-handed weapons or a two-handed. Yeah. A helmet, armor, two rings or items, consumables. And that's virtually it. So you okay. just put your cards around your board. Okay, and what's this and countdown put... for along the top? That's your action points. No, so... no, this countdown here. That one. Five, four, three, two, one. It looks That's like a timer. Pieces. Right. So some of your abilities have take a couple of turns. To oh, you'll down. play a card out and it'll like yes. reset. Oh, that's a bit like that ancient knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Except you don't lose it at the end of it. Right. It just goes back into your hand. Yeah. There's stuff underneath this as well. We've got some little counters. We've got a little bag in here too. A couple of little baggies. Yes. Little velvet, this velveteen is, bags. Yes. They're the velveteens. That's what you get with the base one. Okay. If you'd done the Kickstarter, then we'll bring this box out for a minute reason. Oh, well, no, no. If that's if the fancy stuff's in there, we'll do it as a separate wee box. Just well, you get your big chunky dice. Yep. Bespoke dice. Bespoke dice. Your counters. Well, that's your bits for your wheels. Uh, there's little counters yep. lurking on the other side. That's, there, the, so that's for your the wheels. The lockers yep. for your wheels. This is the counters for your Oh, yeah, there's the glass. And there's your R glass. And there's little standee things and there. And some standees for your character or your enemy mob 
Markers. Got you. And then we have a few decks of cards. You have your cards tutorial dice, all. cards. And these are the cards. I'll let you have a look at them. That's just a skill card. These are the tutorial cards. Okay. So your characters will all start with these sort of things. In the tutorial. Right. So it's there's, again, to, to sort yeah. of draw a comparison that people might be familiar with, the likes of that Pathfinder card game. Pathfinder. Well, I was thinking, yes. So you'll have starting deck, starting items to, to get you the ball roll, and yeah. then as you quest, you'll unlock other cards Pieces from other decks. and remove them and okay. improve. And you can change your spells and so on. You may decide you don't want spells at all. Fairly standard yeah. cards. Quite quite a high sheen off them there. Yes. And sort of nothing to write home about. I mean, the artwork's perfectly permissible, but yeah. nothing that sort of jumps out immediately. It's nice. Thing. It's pretty yeah. artwork. Yeah. The one thing I'd say is I find that the cards are a bit thin. Yep, it's uh, it's kind of fairly standard card stock there. Yeah, I think for the price you're paying for this, that the card stock should have been at least then finished. Well, they've, they seem to have put a lot into their books and their, their token sort of thickness and whatnot, so um, I suppose you have to allow them that. These are this here. We didn't mention these. These will have the wheels put on the bottom. Yep. So you can set the hit points. Okay. And... These are for debuffs. Okay. Because some will last three rounds, some will last two, and some will last one. So as it, every round action ends, they'll count down. Fair enough. And they do fit in when the wheels are off in a specific well, way. That's, that's useful. Right, we'll set. But here is oh, one thing. These are the debuffs. Uh-huh. Now, that other pile is also the debuffs. Okay. So these are all out in separate piles. Right. So you have 24 debuffs. Okay, so 24 things. decks of cards have to be, or little, yeah. little packs of cards. So what people have suggested, and I think it's a wise move for some of these games, is something like this. As he brings out an extra. Yet again, I have purchased more stuff. Oh, of course. Now this is, just to be clear, this is a third party item. Yeah. Okay, so it's, it's like a, a, business it's a business card, card holder. Yeah. And you put your cards into that. And instead of having them sprawled out and having a table hog of a game, it has reduced it by all those areas into just two small areas. Yeah. And you should get two in the each. Yeah, that makes complete sense. Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good idea, Bob. Always one for a, a trick you. Well, it's been, a lot of people have been saying about it. So we're still not finished on the core box. No. Uh, this this might be the first unboxing that requires two videos. Um, so we're going to stop. Do not go any further. Anything onto this sheet until after the tutorial. Well, we're we're going to break. We're going to break that rule. So we've got a little pack here. The Hall of Echoes quest. Don't, these are stories and quests. Okay. And you don't open them until you're told to. Right. Well, we'll Each not... character has their own story. All right. That's nice. Well, we'll not we'll not and open that then. No. Uh, we've got more tokens. More tokens. And this one has... That's the talents. The talents. Yeah. And we've got an R wheel. We've got a couple more spares. And some swords. And then we have an R sheet of snow. what makes the game. All right. Okay. So there's... Well, yeah. Like every other mad deck of card game on the planet, it needs something like that there. I was worried when you, you mentioned about all these cards. That looks quite tidy. Yeah. The big ones are locations. Okay. These ones are the skills, mm -hmm. the items, and the items are leveled done by level as well. They've it's actually tight. they've actually got little dividers in here. I don't know if you'll see. I don't want to. I don't want to open this one up because I know we've had to press on with things. But they've got little dividers for each section. Plenty of space for things. I'm I'm very taken by the fact that there was a lot of stuff in this first tier, yep. and your first quest, your first cards, and something. Like, what what more could there be? Boom. The rest of the game. Yeah. Okay. So you get down to here, and it's, now we can start properly, guys. Yes. Okay. And um, it's set by hacks. I like that as well. I like that. That's 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 nice. So throw one of those in. This. Yeah. Oh, that goes that goes in first. So this is our first box. Yep. This is the base game. Uh, as as base games go, I've got to say that's that's quite nice. It is. There's there's yeah. a lot of stuff there. 
It's pretty. Are you keeping him out now? He was down no, there. I'm, I'm doting. I know you are. I'm sure I'm old. I'm allowed to be see how. I will get the lid. Oh no, where? Oh, there's an idea. Yes, there's an another bag. No, the one. That's another wee gripe. They didn't give us cutouts on the side to pull it off. No, I was going to say I'd, one of the reasons they didn't want to manhandle your bottom tray. But they have us. They do have a side which is open. They allow you there. Okay. That's how it really a little, it. a little bit eased. Even with that, it still could do better. I've got to say, that in itself, quite impressive. Uh, it's an awful lot of stuff to be carrying around, even just for the base game. Yeah. Well, um, but, you, you know, and so pr we haven't actually mentioned money. How much I for paid, the base game? I paid $240. For everything. For everything. And $27 shipping. Right. But it was meant to arrive in 2019. That's a long time ago. <laughs> That's a long time ago. It has... I could barely lift that ball. It is... I think from Larian. What would you like to go with? Well, you, you pick it. It's your toy. Right, shall we go with the expansions? Yeah, let's do expansions. We'll go with the Haunted Keep. You'll need okay. the knife. So, Haunted Keep, folks. Um... We'll use our small, convenient, and handy knife. Break the seal. Uh, I think it's nearly 400 euros if you're going to buy everything. Uh, I'd say the Kickstarter now? Yeah. Right, okay. As in, if you're going to buy from Larry. That's a, that's a hefty tag. How much, do you know how much the base game is on its own? Oh, it's about 150, 160, which is standard now for that size of game. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's still big money, but I you know, get where you're coming from. Skyrim was around that. And again, with a massive saving in buying it. So my imagination tells me here that what we're going to be into is kind of like miniature repeats of this, where we're going to have an adventure book or auxiliary maps. Not an adventure book. Right. They have changed it slightly. Yes, extra rules. Okay, couple of pages. It can be integrated into the main campaign. Okay. We get new inserts for our bottom yep. big card deck. Some. New spell or something is that? New effect. New effect. And instead oh. of doing the atlas, they did boards. Boards. So, what? Oh, okay. Double sided boards. Double sided boards. So, you have, I think, three or four in to Keep? Yeah, I mean, I I'm immediate, just a, a game for me. So, people don't I'm, get complaining. Oh, yeah. We're going to try and avoid spoilers. So, you have one, which is the ancient crypt and the laboratory. The next one. Oh, there's another one in here. I think there's another one. Yeah, again, it's quite hard to get things lifted out there. There we go. It's got a lovely big picture of a dragon on the back, that one. So this one is the Enchanted, Enchanted Hall. Hall. And if that's a big picture, just. No, there's no, a lot no, of No, no, that's like the boss. Okay. That's the boss. So, spoiler alert. Well, we'll flash up a spoiler yeah. alert. Two. And another one. Uh -huh. Okay. So there's six extra, six extra pages. Six new area. Well, six new boards because yeah. we're, we're not pages. I would have... Six made, new atlas uh, uh, areas. Yeah. The head immediately goes, should that not be something that I can now insert into that book that they've they've gone? A big beast, eh? Oh, bring him out. So it's like some sort of dragon, griffin, mutant yep. thing with two tails. A whack of location cards. Yep. Each area and some extra player cards and some room cards. Okay. I have a vague recollection of one of the times you this, were talking about updates back in the midst of time. You used to be able to make runes, was the original intent, and yeah, now the runes are pre -made. They removed the runes, they removed the crafting system and brought in crafting consumables. They just decided it didn't work. Okay. Well, they said it didn't work, people. We don't know. Yeah, you do seem to have been kept in the dark about this a little bit. We were. All right. Should look be on the top? Yeah. No, no. It's, remember, those out. That's on the top of this to stop it from Was it? Yeah. All right. And then in. So this can be added in. Hold up. Oops. Yeah. There. So then this has another adventure. We have... Nemesis, 
but it's just another one which can be added in. It's more end game. Okay. Well, well, what we'll do is we'll not look at any maps in this one. We'll just sort of go through. I think through, it's three boards again. We'll go through the component count more than anything else for this one, so that we we're just we're trying not to spoil it for people. Yeah. We've maybe lingered a bit too much on certain pictures. We'll. Sorry, but <laughs> if you really want to know what a we board can, says. We can put a little disclaimer up that uh, if you're wanting to keep everything secret, don't be looking too too much detail. But if you're wanting to know about value for money, this is going to be useful. So again, we've got our little additional rules. Yep. We have more new dividers. Right. We have more new tokens, including keys. Mm -hmm. And then we had another big body map. And Ooh. another one. Three so again. Three again. And then another monster. Uh, we'll not cards. reveal this one. Location cards. Uh, looks like a monster deck there. Oh, it's the boss deck. Right. And then more. Each boss has underneath. a same deck as well, which they they draw from to fight you. So it's not a simple fight. So in terms of like you know DLC, so to speak. These are the these DLCs. Are, yeah, but how much gameplay time should each expansion be providing the players? It's about six, 68 hours. 68 hours a mission. Okay. Um, and price tag for an expansion, roughly? I think those ones are £40 each. Okay. €40, Euros, sorry. This one, I don't know if it is done. If it is, I think it's about €25. Euros. This makes the game harder. Because <laughs> that's what every game needs to be made harder. Well, some of them do, I suppose. This is hard mode. That was originally one of the stretch goals. Right. And there was also meant to be a dungeon mode in it. So you could, and if you didn't want to do the campaign, you could wander off and do... Something fun! Dungeon, yeah. Have a... If you enjoyed it. So they decided to release this. This is how they decided to do this. Dungeon mode and nightmare mode. Okay. So you've got a wee... Pad to keep... <laughs> keep your... Defeated your, enemies? Yeah. You're keeping like a kill count? Yeah. Your kill count, that's the exact word. Quite a hefty deck there. Yeah, because it uses the cards Spawning in different ways. Spawning minions. So this is this is like your Diablo part of it, your Baldur's yeah. Gate part of it. It's, yeah. And this is actually a game to control how the cards come out and what, how you do it. Okay. It's the trick. But you can add it in. These here are added into the decks. So in terms of somebody who was looking at this with a view of maybe buying it, this wouldn't be an essential purchase. No, unless they want to go hard mode. If you play, played everything through, maybe a couple yeah. of times, you could go, this will get me another, a third trip through the through the game. Uh, you should get about, you probably can get multiple trips, well, more four or five trips. I'm just sort of thinking how, you, how much time, and you guys feel free to, to, to tell us differently, but it seems that board gamers now are being asked to spend longer with each game at the table and hence you, you know, you've got people who purposely seek quick games and they're fast friendly games and all the rest of it. And the people who sort of buy these ones, it's nearly it's nearly like the big computer games where the, the software company kind of go, no, we want you just to play our game. We want to make our game so big it's the only thing that fits in your PC. So you have to play this all the that's time. That's Ubisoft. Yeah. That's all. That's, that, that's <laughs> not Ubisoft. But you know, is Divinity Original Sin? You look at the guys that are coming down to the club and playing um, Gloomhaven. Yes. That's a commitment every fortnight to play nothing but Gloomhaven. That's it. And and they're not even a fraction away. Oh, they've already started. Whereas you're saying this is a little bit faster, but you're still obviously going to be at a well, point where you think, I've got to clock up enough sessions that this pays for itself. Well, it's this, this is one where you can either... Make or break it. Okay. Um, it's oh. one where other people can play it. Because you don't... As long as you know what's in your deck, or somebody else can play it on a different day to you. Okay. You don't have to have the same level of investment. No. Gloomhaven, you have to have... Exactly. You know, your card deck is your card deck. That's it. You know, you can't... And it changes over the game. And then you retire your character at one point and start a new character. Yeah. And then you can bring back your old character again. You know, so it's it's a totally it's a totally different beast. Speaking of beast, this is a beast of a box to get into. 
I, I, this box is the first one that I've looked at that gives me a Dungeons and Dragons kind of vibe to it. Yes. This, in my opinion, is totally unnecessary. Superfluous. Superfluous. <laughs> yes, that's, that's a very nice word. Again, it's a, it's a, it's a lovely... Always get excited about a good box. Who doesn't get excited about well, a nice we box? Know we know that. Wow! <laughs> That's big. Okay, so now I'm suddenly not as terrified with this box. That's literally this box exists because that thing's so big. And then two other trays. And then trays. two other trays. Okay, so very quickly what we've got here is we've got some sort of mythos-esque tentacle tree things. Yes, and if we look, I'll actually get the other bit of it for you. There's the other bit of it there. So you have those. We've got chickens. Bob, there's chickens. And this, and that's the Kraken. Oh, right. Oh, so those are like the Kraken's limbs. Yes. Oh, the that's tentacles. so cute. So that can be in like one, yes, and they lash out. To How does areas. this work in a game book? Because this, I don't know. I'm not going to tell you. No, don't tell me. But that I can see a lot of people just being excited about that kind of a miniature for a, oh, yes. for a gaming yeah. table. You know, if that's its limbs and this is it, wow. And then we've, yeah. got, we've got chickens. Yes. And we've got some kind of dead You've got some more characters. Fish thing. That looks a little bit like a king in yellow. Sorry for all the Cthulhu references. A little sort of like fire goblins or something. That's Sir Loris, who's an undead ah. hamster and an undead cat. Sorry, a non dead hamster. That squirrel. An undead squirrel. Yes. Lion. I don't know why they put it in, but he's there. That's ridiculously cute in weird ways. You've got the black cat in the base game. And it's a fire shimmer. Of course fire. it is. It's only coming up. And then over here we've got like tentacly people things. Some of the bosses. Somebody there. really likes the tentacles. Yeah. Lots more tentacles. It's like a tree oak. man thing. Yep. It's their take on a tree. Yeah. And then a sea, like a spider thing over here. Yeah. Now you ready for this? You summon that. Right. So you actually can bring that into the battle. It's a your... bone spider. It is. I determined that from the fact that it's made from bones. It is actually one of the spells that a necromancer does. Wow. A nice big sort of night. Lift out that big brute to we see what it for a second. The one million dollar target bonus figure. You mean this little beastie? Wow. <laughs> there be dragons. So it's got belts around its its. Yeah, is this it undead? It's undead. Ah, oh, right. So it's got belt holding it together. It's got stitch marks. It's like a Frankenstein dinosaur. Wow. Okay, I like that. I'm, I thought you might. No, no, that sounds ungracious. As if I haven't been impressed so far. I've been impressed overall by the quality of everything you've shown me here. Slightly put off by the the game book aspect. But the that there, that's that's mouth watering. I would both love to and hate to paint it at the same in the same breath. Well, you know what I'm like for painting. Well, you've you've come on and leaps and bounds in your painting. Uh, not anymore. Now this is a carryover from when they were going to have terrain effects. Okay, it's a barrel. Yes, but it's a barrel of death fog. It's a barrel of death fog. So it's you could have moved that about and then detonated it. Oh, right. So these were going to be a thing in the game. Yes. And now they're, they're not. They're not. Now they're, they're wee bits that you add to the whole. Well, you can always set it that way up and it's just See, a barrel. a fire barrel. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. You had poison over here and water, I believe. There's water. Oh, the, the deadly water barrel. Oh, of course it's deadly. Yeah. You know, what happens when you wet a floor? Oh, but if you don't put a don't slip sign up, you get sued. Ah, uh, well then, what happens if somebody casts lightning onto it? Ah, clever. And then what happens is then, somebody casts lightning, so you're all stunned. So then somebody hits it then with a fireball and turns the water into steam. You're, you're already making... Or, sorry, what happens is, sorry, they do this instead. They poison the water. Somebody poisons the water. And then somebody else... Hits the fireball onto the water, 
or turns it into steam, steam, which turns it into poison. You're already paper. making me regret that they don't include this in the game anymore. You're telling me something that I'm never going to get to do now. You can do that in the video game. For great fun. Well, we'll just all run out and buy that instead, shall we? And you can carry the barrels about <laughs> if you have the right, if you know what to do. Okay, and so that's 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 a, that's that's a fairly impressive box of miniatures yeah. then, really. Again, on its own, if the, does this have a price tag on its it own? It does. And what's that? And it's quite expensive. Well, go on, shock us. I believe it's about hundred pounds. Hundred pounds. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a dragon in there. A big it's dragon. The dragon. Yeah. I mean, a big dragon probably would cost you. It's something of that level of money. This is in a lot of the games. I the figure boxes are very expensive. Yeah. Oh, God, I don't know what a hundred pounds is that expensive for a figure box. Is this our last one? It's a mini box of figures. Miniature upgrade. This was the boss upgrade box, which was changed. They added some into the base game. Yeah. And they kept these and brought them out as a separate box. Personally, I think they could have gone in there. But that's yeah, there, do, there does seem to be enough space for it. Okay, so we'll take the, the, just take the, the lid off for glare. And we'll maybe not go into too much detail on these in case it's spoilers for some people. Except for him. Who's the cheese merchant for some reason. The cheese merchant. The cheese merchant. So we have an undead squirrel riding a cat. Yeah, and we have the cheese merchant who's an NPC. And we have the cheese, and he's got a ball of cheese and a, and a lump of cheese. Yeah. Again, it was a carryover from the initial campaign. Okay. Now the rest of them are bosses. I want the cheese boss. You can have the cheese boss. Because <laughs> he would be cheesy. He Yo. is. He, could, he sells the consumables. Right. He's the shopkeep. Yes. Okay, that's that's right. the weirdest expansion I've seen. We've got the wee white box somewhere, which uh, is the extras which yeah, came. I think, yeah, I think you've got it. Have I got it? I think you've got no, it. No, I haven't got it. Right? You must have it. I don't have it. There's no boxes over with No, me. I have the stands. Have I, oh, I've got it. Sorry. Right. Right. So this is, has the extras which were for the premium extended edition, the all-in. So if you stayed around for the end, folks, <laughs> this still won't be yeah. worth it. One thing. Big, a extra set of big dice. Yeah. Well, more dice is always useful in these games. I certainly remember in the Fantasy Flight. Fantasy one, yeah. I had to buy about six or seven extra sets of dice. Now, these are slightly different. Do you like the coins? Yes, I have more coins coming. So I didn't think 20 coins was enough. There's always room for more coins. Quite quite heavy, but without kind of sounding too metal. Ooh, Instead like of cloth, fake they leather. are, no they're not, they are leather. Ooh. They gave the people the option. Right. If you wanted. Fake leather The or vegan leather. version. Yeah. Or the real thing. And people opted for the real thing? No, you could pick. Oh, you could just choose? Yes. Right, you got you. And of course, as you know, I'm a well-known vegan. If it moves, yeah. I beat it to death and eat it. Yeah, yeah. There's, I can already see the complaints coming in after that comment. <laughs> comments expressed by Bob or his own. Exactly. But no, that's that. Okay, that's it's a nice little box of extras though, and the fact that you could get. And then you didn't have to buy these. Yeah, but the fact you could opt for, uh, you know, a vegan option in the bags or the leather option if you. You can hold leather. your tokens in them now. Yeah. Because that's all there. Right. We'll we'll cut back to us. Well, there we go. That's a, a quick guided tour through uh, Bob's divinity, uh, original sin board game. Um, you're going to be biased. You obviously like it, are interested, excited. Well, I'm interested. I was looking forward to the elemental effects and extra bits that were in the original concept. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to play it, I would like to see, and then make my decision on it. As to what we get, I think the base set is excellent. I think it's a very good base set. I think the expansions are worth the money. They're reason they're reasonable sized. My only grievance is I was buying it now is this: the two finger boxes. Yeah, they seem they seem kind of surplus it's, to requirements. Yeah. if you want a big kraken and a big yeah. dragon. And you want boss figures? Fine. 
But if you want mud, if you want the normal mob figures, you fight normally. You don't get them. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't, looking at it cold, it doesn't strike me as a miniatures game. It's not. So seeing all these miniatures, which in your heart will probably require painting to get that sort of sense of value yeah. or whatever, they seem grossly unnecessary. And I think I think I kind of look at them now with a little bit of a, a sense of disappointment that there's these class miniatures like that fantastic dragon. And really, looking at this game from what I've seen of it, all that dragon's going to have to do is go, there's a dragon. And everything we need to do to relate to fighting that dragon is just going to be cards played and cards effect and a few yes. dice rolls. Um, there's not going to be any sort of movement around the table war game style. No, it was on the original game, it was a tagnal board, central piece. Mm -hmm. And you put the location cards around the side, outside. So the eight locations round the thing. And uh, initiative was done slightly differently. So you could actually, the heroes could be faster than the enemies. Um, they decided that was too complicated. So they cut that out and they did the, the heroes sit, started in the center. They're always, you'd always have mobs that are faster than the heroes. And you always have mobs that are slower than the heroes. Hmm. Rather than having maybe the heroes going first before all the mobs. So they did that, they removed the, they, well, sorry, they changed the elemental effects. Um, they removed the crafting. But crafting, you've got a large selection of cards for consumables and items. And then there's treasure on top of that. And they're done by level. So once you get to a certain level, say draw X number of these cards. And if you go to the merchant, you pay them, by the way, to go to the merchant. Of course you do. And then you get a choice of multiple cards. And if you want more, you pay more. And then you still have to buy the items. No, pay to win, pay to win, pay to win. Yeah, pay to see. I don't know. Um, it's an impressive bundle of stuff. Yeah, it for the price I paid, it's a very good price. It appears to be an impressive bundle of stuff, although I was just going to say, for, for the price you paid. Um, I don't know that there's anything that I'm seeing in it myself that would make me go, oh, I wish I'd got... In fact, there's, there's nothing no. that I've seen that makes me go, oh, I wish I'd got that. The worrying thing, from my point of view, is, and you know how rarely I'll say I'm negative about a game... But the way I think of my point of view is there's also nothing in it that I'm seeing that makes me go, I can't wait to play it. No, um, I personally feel that they simplified the overall game to appeal to the mass market. I am um, the original concepts were quite intensive. The way the elemental effects worked and so on were quite intensive. As mm. in, it took quite a bit of work. Initiative had to be controlled and so on. You had to, you know, move, you had to figure out your initiative. Now you know what your initiative is. You know how many action points you have. You know what you're, you know, you know if you've cast a fireball, you're going to burn people and they're going to stay on fire for X number of turns. But before it was, if you'd cast a fireball and they were standing in a pool of oil, they're going to burn forever. They were going to crackle like a log. There was a more there was a more yeah. in depth gameplay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I I want to try it. I think it's going to be enjoyable enough. Maybe not fully my cup of tea. I say definitely don't think this is. If you were buying it, you give up without that. Live without it. But what do you think? Um, by now, some of you quite possibly have your Divinity oh, Original Sin. Um, how have you found it? How was your experience of opening your box? Once you got over the initial excitement about finally arriving since 2019, um, how have you settled down with it? What's, what's your feelings on what was promised to what you've got? Or if you've been maybe somebody who's been more speculative and has sort of spied somebody selling this off, as quite often happens with Kickstarters, whenever somebody gets them, they're... Situations yeah. change, they sell them. If you've just acquired this, what's what's your thoughts on looking through the boxes? 
or what's your thoughts on what you've seen. Uh, as always, we love a bit of feedback and uh, we will apologise. Sound might not be just perfection in this one because we've had a, a microphone difficulty and we've done a little bit of kind of old school gorilla filming for this one, but we wanted to get the, the ball rolling on it before Bob has to start tearing rule books apart and stomping them down the stairs and throwing them away. Yes. <laughs> As always, thanks very much. If you've stuck to this point, we appreciate it. If you have time, give a subscribe down below. Give it a thumbs up. If you've got constructive criticism, we'll probably listen to it. Um, and we will try and be back much quicker with the next one. Certainly quicker than a game that was promised in 2019 and getting delivered in 2024. But until the next time, have fun, play more games and be nice to one another. Bye-bye.